Terry, why did this very expensive half a billion dollar program to train these supposed moderate Syrian rebels just never get off the ground? Well, I think it was always an uncertain enterprise for a number of reasons, but really two. I think first, there were a lot of unanswered questions about the command and control structure for these rebels, where they were going to get recruits, how would they be sustained militarily, what's the command and control structure, would they be protected when they went into battle, or would they be sort of be off on their own? And so I think that's one set of questions. The other qu set of questions, though, are resources. I don't think the scale of the program came anywhere close to matching the scale of the challenge. And so until you fix that, this is a big mess. And to fix a big mess that we care about, you need a bigger set of resources and a bigger force. Is there any reason at all to think the new strategy of arming groups that are already in battle against Islamic State is going to work better? Well, it still has a lot of questions around it because the, all those questions I raised are still relevant, but you miss the step. You, you skip the step of who are you going to recruit, where are you going to get these people from. But I still think all those questions need to be answered. And will there be enough arming? Will there be enough scale to deal with this challenge? Is there also a question about U.S. intelligence and how good it is in Syria and who exactly these groups are? Because that's been a big concern of the administration, hasn't it? Not to arm radical Islamist groups and to try and find these so-called moderates. It's never going to be perfect. The world doesn't present itself to us like that. There's always going to be those challenges. But after four years of a major problem and a major intelligence focus, on Syria, if we don't have some sense of these groups and who's on what side, then we have bigger problems in our intelligence community. Has the Russian entry into this battle in support of President Assad shown up the U.S. strategy somewhat? I mean, I think it's shown it up to a degree, but the Russians themselves will face challenges too. You cannot defeat ISIS from the air, and I know Syrians, Syrian forces and Iranian forces are helping. But they, too, will face a lot of challenges, including when their soldiers end up on a video being beheaded and when their facilities are bombed. Isn't the basic problem here that there needs to be a political solution in Syria, not a military one? And are we remotely any closer to that, even after President Obama and President Putin met last week in New York, supposedly to talk about this? Well, I think the military isn't the only solution, but the military has to be applied to contain ISIS or in some ways to stalemate it. But you're right. Ultimately, the roots of this problem are in Syrian society, in the Syrian polity. And until we move to an inclusive, representative, broad-based Syrian government that has legitimacy among its people, this, is, this problem is not going to go away. The Russians did say today that they were striking Islamic State, despite what Washington has been saying about their targeting. Um, isn't it possible that if the US and um, the Russians are also targeting Islamic State briefly, this could work? I think so, but the, let's be very clear. The Russian forces are there to protect the regime. That means maybe striking ISIS targets, but they're also going to strike the rebel targets because they have a strong investment in keeping Assad in power. Barry Pavel, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure.